Well, remember, any machine learning system is only as good as its training data. These things are not manually programmed like you would program a traditional computer program. Nobody sat down and typed out all of the code in ChatGPT, you know, the billions of lines of code or whatever it is, millions probably, that allow, that allow it to do what it does. Nobody sat down and figured out how to write code to do that. It was done by a generative AI algorithm. It was, it was trained, or if you want to say, it, if you, you might say it was grown. Um, but all of this is based on the training data. So if there is a bias in your training data, there will be a bias in your system's output. And there have been many instances of visual recognition systems that work perfectly fine in testing uh, and work perfectly fine when they're designed, but they fail completely when they're thrown into the real world. Uh, it turns out the real world is a lot more complicated than anything that you can tend to plan for. There's always going to be some edge cases that you haven't considered. Uh, so for example, a common one, uh, for example, race is a common one, you know, skin color, racial ethnic groups, etc. Um, startups run by tech bros out in Silicon Valley aren't exactly known for being the most diverse lot, um, although they're getting better, etc. But um, when so when designing a visual, uh, you know, a vision uh, recognition system, a machine vision system, uh, companies often use the most convenient source of training data possible, uh, their own employees. So they'll get a bunch of employ their own employees to perform some action in front of a camera that they're trying to train an AI to do. They'll get some uh, some uh, some a bunch of their employees to perform uh, actions in front of a camera, and it works. And then they'll create a uh, system to recognize those and and uh, uh, rank things accordingly, and rate the, rate uh, f uh, input videos and p images accordingly. And it works perfectly fine for those employees. Uh, but unbeknownst to them, the software they trained is using correlations that might work well for one gender or one racial group, but not work well for others. Uh, so, for example. Let's, uh, before we get into some real world examples, let's talk a bit, let's look at uh, a bit of a, a thought experiment. Uh, for example, let's say I'm designing a machine vision system uh, for one of those, uh, you know, automated sliding doors uh, you'll see at grocery stores and other places. I want, a so I want some software that will look at a video feed, detect when a human is present, and open the door. That's all I want it to do. I want it to just be simple. I just want when a human is in front of the door, open the door. I don't want them opening. I don't want the doors opening when nothing is in front of them. I don't want them opening when a squirrel walks past them. I just want them to open for any human whatsoever. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to create a security door that'll only work for me. I'm not trying to do it. I'm not trying to create a door that will only work for adults or won't work for children. I just want a door that opens for human beings. That's it. Something you would install on a grocery store. So how do I do that? Well, I first develop a set of training data. I get a, you know, I mount the camera. Uh, if I, I mean, I have a rig that I, you know, set up in a testing lab. I mount my camera uh, at the same angle and distance as a, uh, as it would be in a real world application at a grocery store or a similar retail outlet. And then I get a bunch of people to walk in front of the camera at the same, in, in, at the same distance that they would as they were, uh, you know, in same gate, etc., that they would as if they were walking into a, uh, a business. I then go through and manually label uh, certain frames as containing humans or not containing humans. I then run an AI system to produce code that will flag whether an image contains a human. Uh, so this software will then continue. So again, I have this big data set of some images that contain humans and some images that don't contain humans, and I train the software accordingly. And then uh, it, it does its little statistical mojo and its statistical magic, and it figures out uh, uh, some black box algorithm that will be able to tell, ideally, whether a human is in frame or not. And then I can then take that piece of software, put it in a device, have it monitor a feed in a, in a real world uh, grocery store or similar, and just look whether humans are in, in the frame. And when a human is in the frame, it tells the door to open. Except, remember, this is just a piece of software, a piece of code running on a computer chip. It is not a physical being living in the physical world. It doesn't know what a human is. Uh, it doesn't know, you know, what uh, how big a human is. It doesn't know how the, even the concept of bigness is. It doesn't know uh, uh, how it doesn't know anything about the world. It is just a piece of code running embedded within a computer chip. Um, 
so again, it didn't know anything about the world. I had to instruct everything it knows. It didn't know what a human being is. I had to tell it. I had to teach it what a human being is. And, uh, you know, you can think of, uh, you know, you can think of famous examples in philosophy of, you know, the trouble of defining what a human is. You know, you have the famous idea of, uh, you know, a human is a, a, a biped without feathers and the problems of that. But uh, how, how did I actually teach that algorithm what a human is? I didn't, you know... I, you know, if I'm trying to teach, if I wanted to teach an alien, like an, an actual physical being that is from another world, what a human is, well, I could show them a bunch of creatures. I could say, okay, well, here's a bunch of humans, here's a bunch of dogs, a bunch of cats, here's an elephant, here's a house, you know, and it would have some understanding of what a human innately is. It would recognize us as biological organisms of a certain size and shape, and it would probably be able to do that pretty accurately because it itself is a physical being in the physical universe. But the program doesn't really work that way. It doesn't know what a human being is. It just knows that I told it that this collection of pixels in a camera uh, or an image is a, a particular uh, set of pixels and shaped in a certain way are human. Again, it didn't know what a human is. I had to teach it. And the only way it has of knowing what a human being is are the images that I gave it. Uh, it can't perform tests. It can't go and like look at humans from different angles. It can't. It can't try to pick a human up and see what it weighs. It can't try to shake a human's hand and see what you know human skin or human uh, the the density or stiffness of human flesh is. It can't. It doesn't have any context of that. All it has is Im the images that I gave it to that machine to that code. That is what a human is. So I better be sure I got that right. Because if I didn't correctly teach it what a human being is, it's not going to know what a human being is because it cannot perform any validation or testing on its own. So, but what if there is a bias in my training data? So, uh, for example, let's say I wasn't careful. Uh, maybe I didn't include uh, any or a sufficient number of people or of one ethnic or racial group or, or another. Um, maybe I'm doing this as maybe I'm maybe I'm a company, I'm an employer. And as I'm, you know, I'm a startup and I'm building this thing or whatever. And I just am lazy. I get my data set all for my own employees. And because my company is kind of small, I don't have that many employees. So it's really easy for me to have, you know, if you only have a dozen employees, it's very, it's quite possible that you won't have, you know, all of human humanity racial groups represented it among your employees. So it's quite easy to see how that could happen. Um, well, if things go wrong, what does that represent or what, does, what happens to that door that I did not train it uh, on samples of people of all ethnic groups? Well, what the actual consequences of that will depend a lot on how the algorithm works. It may not actually go the, you know quite this catastrophically wrong, but it may. Um, but if things go really wrong, they could go very wrong in the sense that I might actually end up with a door that opens for most people, but refuses to open for people of one particular racial group or another. Imagine that. Imagine trying imagine something so ridiculous, so insane. You have a door that absolutely just refuses to open for uh, one racial group or another. Great. Because of my idiocy and laziness, do you know what I have just built? I have built a racist door. That's the kind of thing that can happen if you're not careful with this type of software. And again, actually, uh, now that I think about that, that actually is a not a bad metaphor for uh, racism uh, arises out of idiocy and laziness. But uh, anyway, so if I sell a great, if I try to sell one of these to a grocery store, there's going to be problems everywhere. Uh, customers are rightly going to feel uh, pretty wronged and traumatized by that. Um, this is 2023. I hope people aren't still doing that, although it does still happen, unfortunately. But now we've automated racism. Great. We've automated racism. Um, so the store itself might be on the hook for a civil rights lawsuit. Uh, individuals are going to be uh, rightly miffed. The store it might be on the hook for a civil rights lawsuit. Uh, certainly no, no one is ever buying a door for me ever again. That's for sure. And I'm always going to be remembered as that jackass that built a racist door. <laughs> So yeah, um, and actually I'm surprised, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, some troll has already created this on TikTok. But uh, anyway, now why would the training process create such a strange result? I did not, again, remember, 
I did not try to create a racist door. I'm, there's not some piece of code in there that says, you know, take citation from, you know, Jim Crow South and create a racist door. No, I did not do This is accidental. I did not intend to do this. This is entirely just from laziness and not using a sufficiently representative set of training data. Um, so, but why does this happen? Why, why, uh, what is going on here? Where does the origin of the strange result? I mean, you think about it, aren't all humans approximately the same shape? You know, we got two limbs, two legs, a head. We're all about the same size within, you know, at least in terms of absolute scales, you know, between one and three meters tall. Uh, three meters would be a bit high, but, you know, somewhere in that range. We're approximately the same size and shape. Um, why can't it just say, why does why would race even matter? Can't you just learn to recognize things by, say, like, silhouette? Um, our silhouettes are all reasonably close. Um why can't the program just learn to recognize the shape of a human silhouette? And then that would work regardless of race. Because that might not be the easiest and most reliable way for the learning algorithm to maximize its own reward function. Maybe in training, it didn't, uh, you know, you might be thinking that you're tra training it to recognize people, but it doesn't know what a person is. Uh, maybe in training, it learned to just focus on, say, a human head. Maybe it, in maybe if I, let's say, let's say I only included images of white people in my training data. Uh, if I did that, it might have learned to define human as not my entire human body, but just my head. And to that computer, a human is a face with a skin tone and facial structure of a white person or in you know, representative of a Caucasian ethnicity uh, to the computer. That is what a human being is. You know, you could show it, you could, you could decapitate my head and put it in front of the computer and it would say, yep, that's a human. No, no problem here. Um, just the arrangement of pixels that resemble a white person's head, that to that code is a human being. They are one and the same. And that kind of thing can happen in these black box systems. Again, you're not manually programming it. It is just blindly, you know, randomly guessing and uh, taking random paths and applying evolutionary algorithms until it produces something that, that will uh, maximize its reward function. And sometimes that can produce very weird results. In that kind of case, uh, just this arrangement of pe uh, what it defines as human is an arrangement of pixels that resemble a white person's head. If again, I only included Caucasian people in my training data and any outside this definition, according to this computer, are not human. I started with a biased data set and my resulting algorithm is just as biased as its training data.